What's up everybody? Uh, Kevin with Kosher Surplus. I just wanted to take a few minutes to talk about helmets. Uh, often overlooked when people get into night vision for the first time, uh, obviously the helmet they're attaching it to. So uh, I've gotten quite a few questions over the last few weeks about this combination or this setup in particular and I'd like to just give you a little bit of education on it. Uh, basically what we're looking at is a uh, Team Windy uh, Carbon uh, carbon bump helmet um, and usually the first question I get is like oh how much lighter is it than the regular injection molded LTP well it's actually not they're very close in weight um, for the most part they're very very similar the retention system the pads everything are exactly the same uh, the cool part about the carbon helmet is you have the flexibility to change the the shroud the shroud being how your uh, traditional mount would interface with the helmet so this helmet comes uh, equipped with a three-hole shroud. Uh, if you've been around um, kind of the military-style helmets at, at any point in time, uh, then you may be aware of the um, one-hole, three-hole shroud um, nomenclature as, as it pertains to how the shrouds interface with the helmet. Why this is important is um, the one it comes with is, is fine. It's a, it's a decent shroud. It's got a, a I think it's an, an, an um, an aluminum insert in a injection molded plastic shroud that attaches to the helmet you know with three bolts kind of standard how you would imagine having the modularity to change the shroud is kind of the big difference between the carbon bump helmet and the um, the injection molded plastic LTP the injection molded plastic LTP uh, the Team Windy bump helmet has the same uh, insert into an injection molded section of the helmet, but it's actually permanently attached to the helmet. It's molded into the helmet, there's no way to take it off. So with this helmet, you gain the ability to run something like what, what is on here right now, what it's outfitted with. And this is the Wilcox G69. It's a combination mount and shroud. Uh, and, and why this is important, it's quite a bit lighter than your standard G24 and um, you know either mil spec shroud or a G24 and uh, a regular LTP helmet. Um, the G69 weighs a total of 4.3 ounces, and that's mountain and shroud included. Um, the G24 by itself is five five ounces, uh, 5.75 ounces total. So you're looking at over an ounce of weight savings, and that's not even including the shroud that you have to attach the G24 to. It may not sound like a lot, but when it's on your head and you're putting nods on there, um, it all adds up. So one of these helmets with a G69 on it and, uh, you know, insert your super lightweight bino housing is going to be leaps and bounds lighter than this. Now this is cool too, this is a ballistic helmet, it serves its purpose. But at any rate, I just wanted people to understand, you know, why this is an option, why you may want to look into it, you know, carbon helmet, yeah, it's obviously stronger than plastic, but it's not necessarily about the weight with the helmet, it's about the ability to put a different shroud or mount on it, or combination therein and um, get away from something like this. So, at any rate, very cool option. Um, another thing, so to speak more on the G69, another cool uh, thing we do with these is we can put them on a helmet like this. So, this helmet has kind of like, currently, this is my personal helmet, it currently has the Nerodos um, one-hole mount or one whole shroud, sorry, with a G24 attached to that. I plan on taking this off and modifying it to accept the G69 because it's just way better. Um, the, the adjustability of the G69 is better, and I'll tell you why momentarily. Most of the controls are exactly the same. Um, the control you use to actually bring the night vision down in front of your face from stowed is the same. The cant is the same, the pan is the same. Uh, that's all, you know, you can't really tell the difference just using it um, without really looking at it closely. Um, one of the advantages that the G69 does have, and I'll try to roll in some B-roll of this, 
inside of this shroud there's I think it's a total of 10 or 12 screws behind here and you can move the um, the slide which the mount rides on this portion you can move that up and down quite a bit so if this isn't far enough down or far enough up for you when it's at its lowest setting you can adjust that as well whereas a G24 you're kind of stuck to whatever the I guess the height of the shroud will provide so if you were to drop this all the way down and that's not enough for you when you have the nods in front of your face there's not a whole lot you can do other than try to cheat the shroud down or come with up with some other solution like what kind of like what people were doing with RMVGs that were making a dovetail riser to actually bring the nods down closer to their face with certain helmets um, this kind of alleviates the need for stuff like that so that's a cool feature that a lot of people are not aware of and then again obviously the weight savings you get with the G69 over a G24 and you really any shroud on the market is fairly substantial um, this helmet I'm displaying right now is actually an ACH helmet that a, a buddy of mine cut for me he runs a company called custom cuts he's doing a lot of cool stuff right now um, if you're interested in something like that check out his Instagram um, yeah it's a it's a great option if you need a ballistic helmet or you want a ballistic helmet it's a little more cost effective than going to buy you know a really high speed lightweight lightweight ballistic helmet but you know it all depends on what you're trying to do so so in review uh, we've talked about the carbon bump helmet and why you might be interested in that the G69 in conjunction with the carbon helmet being like just a really cool option as far as having the most lightweight mountain shroud the most lightweight helmet um, you know we've talked about the injection molded plastic team windy LTP this is a great option for the money it really does everything you need a helmet to do uh, except stop bullets and if you're looking for something that stops bullets we sell the team windy ballistics the ballistic SL you know their full line of products so if that's something you're interested in at kosher surplus we can get you taken care of uh, if you're looking for you know if you got an old ACH laying around and you want to make it work for you you can hit up this guy over at custom cuts he can cut it for you you can put your arc rails on it and it's kind of you know utilitarian it looks looks great I mean you can't tell that this isn't a factory high cut helmet but uh, it is it is kind of heavy so keep that in mind um, cost savings going this route you're gonna pay for it and wait there's you know it all depends on what your budget is what your job is what you're trying to do but just keep that in mind um, thank y'all for your time if you need ammo, night vision, thermals, optics, optic mounts, lights, lasers, you name it. If you're shooting at night, get with Kosher Surplus. Thanks. Have a great day. Now I'm going to go through a quick little demo explanation of how you put the G69 on your carbon bump or uh, ACH or just really any helmet that accepts a three hole shroud. I'm going to pull this front pad off. You can just take these out. Not really a big deal. I just stick back in. There's three tiny little Allen screws in here. I don't know if you can see that that well, but they're in there, three of them. In our box over here, we actually have lanyard. 
lanyard mount. Some instructions. Hardware and an Allen wrench. So basically all I'm doing all I'm doing here is uninstalling the factory shroud that came with the Team Windy carbon bump. Taking my hardware and I'm putting it in that box there. So as you see the hardware used on the Team Windy shroud has a flat on either side and it does not interface with the new Wilcox shroud. So we're going to go into our little hardware pack here and find out which hardware to use. What I'm doing right now is I'm getting these screws started in these holes. Just like that. So I was cranking this one down and this one's obviously too long so I'm going to try a shorter screw there. That looks better. It may make sense to use a little Loctite here. I'm just putting this together for a mock-up. Nice and solid. Just pops in place. Now you've got your lanyard. To do is put our pad back in, just like so. Ready to rock. makes no appreciable difference to the inside of the helmet or the function. 